Hey, just wanted to do a quick video on the new EK Supremacy STR4 for the Third Ripper. Now, this came out about, I want to say, two weeks ago. Um, as you can tell, it's a huge change from the original, which is right here. Uh, when this first came out, I had um, pretty much been very disappointed with it, and I had more than one. And when I took it apart in my older videos, you can tell it's pretty much just uh, a regular Evo rotated. Now, it performed horribly outside of stock clocks. It would throttle if you ran anything above, I think, 1.32 volts. Anything above that, it'd pretty much fall apart. Now, at that time, EK was fairly reluctant to address the issue and I did complain to customer support and in November, I believe it was November, they had admitted that there was a problem and they were looking into it. But the product was continuously sold up until I think February. Now between that time they had also released the monoblox which I do have the ASUS one here. Now the center is missing because I'm going to show you the upgrade plate. Now this bluing is from actually using the EK Cryofuel UK Navy Blue and this bluing happened within a week so it's kind of a rough die. Now before this block came out they had released an update or well, upgrade pack if you owned a mono block at that time only the Zenith uh, had the upgrade available. Now what they had did here was they had changed the insert, they added two different jet plates, it was quite a change because the original core was just like the regular Evo but inside the monoblock and they gave this upgraded plate which had a bigger fin array and it, this did help. This part, every, I would say temps went down maybe seven to eight degrees but considering the original margin versus a competitor was anywhere from like 12 to 15, uh, depending on your settings. It still kind of was close, good improvement, but still seven degrees or plus from, you know, uh, like a top performing block, like this one right here. This is the XS PC Raystorm Neo. Um, for Threadripper. This performs probably the best. Um, the heat killer is very similar to this. Uh, I have tried that as well and it's within margin error one degree or less uh, give or take. Now um, recently like I said earlier they came out with this and as a disclaimer this was sent to me by UK as a sample so but I made it very clear that I was gonna say it sucks if it sucks and this, as you can see, has a huge improvement to the cold plate. And I haven't taken it apart, but you can just tell from looking at it that they have made a lot of changes to the cold plate, to the jet plate, and the way the water flows through the block. Now, I ran this on uh, <coughs> a Seuss Zenith uh, on a 360 GTS with three NFP12s. Uh, and uh, EK DDC res combo. It was a small setup. I'll put a picture of it up in the video. And while temperatures are not, you know, the best you're gonna get when you have a motherboard on a box and the rat attached to it. But I ran 15 minutes of ADA with this and 15 minutes of ADA with this, which has pretty much been my go-to block for Third Ripper. Now, these two actually performed within two degrees. Um, I would call it a margin of error, but my water temp was pretty much one degree difference when I ran these two. And throughout the entire time, uh, I hit a 2C higher peak with this block than I did this block. And the average temperature for this block was also two degrees lower than this block. But point being is, I have one of these blocks uh, in, a, in like a full tower with two 480s uh, connected to uh, two Titan XP's and at 
my chip will do 4.05 with an offset of about uh, 210. Now for this quick little test, I ran it with a static volt of 1.3575 at 4 gigahertz, and <clears throat> pretty much, yeah, it comes really close, and I think it's finally kind of a good product. I mean, it took them three tries, technically, but it's finally worth buying uh, a product from UK for Thurderper. Now, this block also does light up um, very nicely compared to this and the heat killer. Um, the heat killer and this block are similar that they have two LEDs, like you see the ports here. You stick it in and then it lights up the entire block, but it kind of, you can tell there where the bright spots are. Reason being is those where the LEDs go. But with this block, there's actually six LEDs. I can actually light it up here in a second here. It's six LEDs wrapped around, so it lights up very evenly, and it is extremely bright. One second. So, yeah, uh, you can see it gets extremely bright. And, it, you know, you can, obviously it connects to your motherboard, you can do whatever you like. So it does look good. It is probably one of the most even lighting blocks I've seen. Uh, in turn, other than that, uh, the only things I probably don't like about this block is, well, mine has that air seal, but you know, that happens. Um, aside from that, I would say when you're installing it, mount the top two first, the two narrow ones. Uh, it's easier to line up line up then after you've put in the bottom a little bit to get the top two to catch. I also not a huge fan how the wire terminates at the bottom because it's fairly short as you can probably see. It's short. So most motherboards if you have an RGB port at the bottom you're not going to reach it with this. You're going to need an extension. And most motherboards also have an RGB header by the top for X399 like top right. Uh, or near the CPU and if you think about it you have to wrap this wire around and you know it's kind of a little too long in that extent too right so you end up having this wire sticking out so I guess if you don't want to deal with that or you don't care for RGBs you can always just get the non RGB version uh, personally I would always suggest to get a metal top because you know acrylic is prone to cracking and even though you might not be putting that much pressure, it can easily crack, especially if you're doing hard lining and you stick, you know, some people jam the tube into the fitting. And if the tube is in the fitting with a lot of pressure, it can cause stress to the acrylic over time. Other than that, uh, to see the video where I recorded it running ADA, you can pretty much check the description. I'll put those two links up. Uh, all in all, uh, if you have a well-cooled system with an ambient, anything ambient of around 25C and you have enough radiators, you should be able to keep your chip under 70C, no problem with this overclocked, uh, which is something you couldn't do before, with UK blocks at least, <sighs> for a third upper. Okay, that's all.